Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am still tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It is still your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch on our platforms. Reach out to me for pricing. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we realize how difficult it can be to discuss a legend in practical terms. Every watch has strengths and weaknesses. Every watch has advantages and drawbacks. But when we're talking about something that has been prolifically disseminated, even outside the watch community, and let's face it, the Nautilus is now an article of pop culture, it can be difficult to acknowledge that it is, on its own, a very good watch. So we're going to discuss this watch as a watch today. Now, taking a quick look at this watch, you can see it retains the profile of wing flanks rounded polygonal bezel, integrated case lugs and bracelet, as first envisioned by the Nautilus designer Gerald Genta back in 1976. It remains big for that era, but about regular sized by the standards of our own. So it's 40 millimeters in diameter. That's measured diagonally. That's not wingtip to wingtip. That would be more like 42, 43 millimeters. It's fairly thin as well, only 8.5 millimeters thick. There are two ways to measure it. Uh, just lug to lug, if we're talking about the case in isolation, then it's 44.2 millimeters. But these end links are gonna be present whether you put it on the strap or you wear it on the bracelet. So they are incompressible and their total edge to edge distance means the real span across the wrist is 48 millimeters. Now surprise, an excellent watch has an excellent fit and feel. A timepiece that wears flat on the wrist, it is somewhat broad, so I'm going to recommend this for 14 centimeters circumference wrists or larger. But you can see when I do down the barrel angles that the lugs are nowhere near the edge of my wrist. Now, over the top, it does look broader than it really is, but that's what this angle does. You can see that it's still not over the edge of my wrist. This is the true angle. You can see just how much clearance I've got. Super flat, sloped case, flank, and bezel. It will slide underneath the cuff. So while this is a 120-meter water, resistant sports watch it can also be your dress watch the nautilus case the bezel the way everything fits together with this bezel attached to flanking wings a uh, mid case with satin polish and transitional bevels and a case back that threads into the reverse along with a bracelet that is beautifully and finely accented all of that explains why so much manual labor goes into the finishing of the Nautilus and why Nautilus has traditionally been more expensive than the Aquanaut. Even the Aquanaut, when offered on a full bracelet, doesn't have this degree of nuanced distinction. All of that takes time and time is money, explaining not just the seniority, but also the relative price point of the Nautilus. The 5711 carries on the tradition of the original Jumbo of 1976, so the bracelet begins tapering almost from the moment it leaves the lug profile. There is a bevel on the side of the case that continues unimpeded down the shoulders of the links, which are thin and very pliant and flexible. It's a silky feel. The intermediate links do taper a little bit as you lead down from the case. Now we've got a double deployment clasp here. Note the use of ceramic spring-loaded pin snaps. So over time, the gold of the clamshell lock cannot aggress against those ceramic snaps, so this locking mechanism will remain snappy and crisp over time. We do have a clamshell lock to hold it all together. It features the Calatrava cross, which is the logo of the brand. You'll find it also on the crown, as well as on the rotor itself. So that is a recurring theme here. Jumping back real quick to the clasp, you can see that it is a sequential close. So this side closes first, and then the interior, the twin swing arm design, is curved to match the underside of your wrist. So it's well designed, and when closed, it is quite flat, which is a real asset on a clasp for a sports watch, as they tend to get a little bit blockish and thick. Now the case is slim. It's no longer monoblock construction, but the water resistance remains 120 meters. The bezel flows into the flanks, and you can see that's all one piece. So the flanks are satinated, with the exception of their ends, which are polished, and then it gives way to a polished bezel that has a little vertical lip down at 6 o'clock and a vertical lip up at 12 o'clock. Its sloped flank is also polished. You can see that the rounded polygonal profile of the outer bezel matches the inner bezel, matches the crystal, and matches the dial. And I've often said... Genta had time to think after his 1972 Royal Oak, and I believe that in resolving the design of the Nautilus four years later, he wanted to take what he did with the Royal Oak one more step, which is to make sure that the inner, outer, crystal, and dial 
all have the same shape and contours. You know, on a Royal Oak, everything inboard of the rounded octagonal bezel is round. Not the case here. Now, the indices as well as the hands are all rose gold. It will not tarnish or oxidize over time, and it's good complementary match for the case. You can also see we have vertical brushed finish atop the bezel. We have a brown bronze gradient dial, so you can see it is sort of a light brown bronze at center and much darker brown at the edge, so there's a fade here. There's also the striations across the dial that have been a feature of every Nautilus, or I should say most Nautilus, since the beginning. Being a sports watch, it is quite well loomed. You'll have no trouble reading it in the dark. And while it does not have a hacking seconds function, it does have a quick set date for this caliber 324. You can change the date just like that. In fact, well, it does not have hacking, a little bit of back pressure can freeze the seconds hand where you want it. So I can freeze the seconds hand right there at 45. It's easy to do. If you do want to synchronize this watch to a reference time, it doesn't have hacking, but I've just demonstrated how Patek owners have known for generations to synchronize their seconds hands. Now on the back, nothing to complain about. Caliber 324 SC which has a calendar in center seconds. It's a unidirectional winder with ceramic bearings. Those two features, unidirectional winding and ceramic, more efficient than bidirectional and steel, respectively. We have a six position adjustment of a free sprung gyromax style balance with an anti-magnetic Spiromax silicon hairspring and the Patek Philippe seal. So this watch is able to run from the factory or from factory service when the time comes, no worse than minus three plus two seconds per day. It has a four hertz beat rate, it pivots on 29 joules, and it is very nicely detailed. It is one of the best in this price class that the holy trinity of AP, Vacheron, and Patek has to offer. Although most of the finishing elements are started mechanically, they are persuasively finished by hand, including, among other things, the engine-turned perlage on the rotor, as well as on the base plate, and the reduction wheel for the winding system, the anglage or beveling on the edge of the rotor and the edge of the bridges, the reaming and beveling inside the jewel sinks. You can see perfectly aligned abrasive wheel, Cote de Genève, laid across the bridges. There is satination on the wheel train and you can see the locating pegs like these three on the balance cock and these on the flanks of the end of the train bridge uh, those have been polished on their top which is always impressive you can see screw heads have been slotted that is chamfered down their slots chamfered on their circumference and black polished on their tops all this oscillating at four hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour. Extensively hand-finished inside and out, and one of the true iconic designs of the 21st century. Reach out to Team Osso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. For that matter, you could say this was one of the icons of the 20th and 21st centuries, a legend that spans era. Again, Team Osso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.